Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Efficient Design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2 in which we are going to attempt to bring Milner Kerman back home after doing some science of course and also to develop a system to bring Kerbals back if they are stranded in orbit uh, to fulfill those sorts of contracts. So those are my plans. First let us uh, get some science so we're logging uh, seismic data. We are trying to see what instruments I actually have on here. Okay, like that. Okay, barometer. Rare case where we actually get a barometer reading. Uh, pretty thin at the surface. You don't think parachutes or wings could work very well here? We should see about that actually, right? I have not done that at all. I have never tried to fly anything in Duna's atmosphere, so that that is on my to-do list. I think, uh, I don't think I've unlocked the graviolis yet, amazingly enough. Let's uh, do a crew report before heading out. Keep the data. Okay, so IVA time. Not IVA. EVA time. Okay, we don't have any ladders. We still haven't unlocked them yet. So, um, he's gonna have to figure out how to get up there. Let's see. It'll be a slow process. Okay. Do we have a plan to flag on Duna? Yeah, we do. Okay. Good. So we're going to get a contract fulfillment there. Okay, so uh, Milner on Duna. And today's date. Oops, not nine anymore. Okay, uh, contract fulfilled. Indeed. Okay, now the tricky part because I'm always bad at this. Oh, wait, wait, what am I doing? Serve a sample. EVA report. Now I get back up there. All right. Face the right direction. Okay. go up there we go okay now I think we're ready to go got that contract filled the only other thing is Ike which it didn't count the first time we went to Ike because we didn't have the contract I guess but now we do we'll need to do that again but not on this try Okay, um, we can we can leave him on the surface of Duna for a while though. What we need to do is figure out when Duna gets into the correct position. Ooh, well, some of our contract we don't have that many contracts out saying we just have the the Ike and a and a Moon one. Hopefully, they won't expire in the time that we take to go around like this. Uh oh, we got another thing. Aha, uh -huh, yeah. Space around Duna didn't get that one. Uh, not Duna, around the moon. Huh. Amazingly enough, I wonder how we managed to miss that one. But I'm not overly concerned. Okay, I think that should be about, well, I, I'm looking for 75 degrees between these two. Uh, that's about right. Okay, now. Now, Milner. Let's, uh, let's take off and see what we can do about this. Uh, should have plenty of fuel.
gear up. Uh oh, I have to transfer fuel from the exterior tanks. Forgot about that. Good thing they're very close to the center of mass. You'll notice I'm not uh, intending to rendezvous with anything and that's because I think I might have enough Delta V just to head straight back home instead of trying to uh, rendezvous with any of these fuel extensions and such stuff. How is our orbit? Uh, a little bit low. Let's get that up there. Okay, so now let us transfer back to Kerbin. Okay, so I've combined uh, inclination, uh, uh, most of the inclination change with the with the home and transfer because we happen to be at the descending node, and I've got it to a thousand seven hundred fifty-seven kilometers. I'll take that. I could get it closer, but there's no real need to. Let me quickly do my math and verify that we do have the Delta V for this. 600 should be easy, but you never know. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, we've got about 1,400. So, no worries. Uh, I hesitate to say it, but uh, we could probably try to land on Ike and then return, but let's let's not take any risks. Now I'm not going to do a mid-course plane change, what I'm going to do is go straight into the, the sphere of influence of Kerbin and then readjust based on what air braking calculator tells me I need to do. I mean I know roughly where we need to be in terms of the air braking but I want to get exact so that we get into orbit around, around Kerbin. I want to give us a chance to get a very nice little landing at the KSC if possible. Probably not possible but you know part of our thing is trying that out. Yeah, it won't be much to correct either. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think any correction is necessary. I think we've, uh, well, I mean, of course, time warping and uh, crossing, well, I won't, I'll try not to cr time warp across these uh, sphere of influence boundaries, but just crossing them tends to change it a little bit. And you saw how tiny those bursts were to get it that close. So, yeah, we will see. Anyway, departing Duna now. Don't think we have any more to do here. We did fly by missions before, so we should have gotten uh, near and high over uh, Duna. So, as far as EVAs are concerned, I mean. Okay, so we're in the sphere of influence, and the first thing I need to do is correct this inclination. Otherwise, we're definitely not gonna. Well, not definitely, but it's gonna make it a little bit harder to hit the KSC like this. So, okay, looks like uh, 41 meter per second burn will get us pointed in the right direction, going counterclockwise around the planet, which is what we want. Well, I mean, it's not necessary, but just for canonical purposes, we might as well. It's just the right thing to do. So, here we go. Okay, so now I'm going to try out Aero Breaking Calculator and see what it has to tell me. Okay, so somewhere between 32,600 and 33,100 is what I'm looking for here. Uh, for that tight uh, fix, we need to get a little bit closer, I think. Okay. 
Oop, too much. Well, that's what happens when you're not using uh, RCS. Okay, well, that should be good enough. 32,750. Don't get too tight. We have passed periapsis, so that's a good thing. Uh, our apoapsis is still... No, I mean, I wanted it between 200 and 400, so this is what it's supposed to do, but... When you're aiming for that close a mark, I'm always a little bit worried that it's going to end up a little bit too close. I think we're actually right at the point where we would retro burn for for home. Uh, pretty close. I think I might try a steeper descent this time. Burn out of this descending node, try and tilt it up, and also uh, burn in. And so we're going to be basically coming straight down on the KSC kind of thing. Uh, it's lower than 200. Good thing I left a little buffer there. Uh, pretty good otherwise. Very nice. Let's try that. It's a totally different approach than what I've been trying so far. So, don't know exactly how we'll go. Okay, well, I think that's still a bit far from the KSC. That's the end of our fuel. Yep, too high. Okay, parachutes. You might wonder why I don't uh, use the parachutes a little bit earlier, and that's just conditioning from real shoots and ferrum aerospace and everything. There's a point where if you try and release them earlier, it'll just rip up, so I just keep doing it that way. Okay, parachutes open, 5.5, 5.4 on the velocity. That should be safe. We have some sort of reef here. That's interesting. Didn't notice that before. Okay, let's just recover vessel. All right, 814 science earned. Crew report from Duna surface, uh, surface sample, EVA report, seismic sand, atmospheric, temperature, recovery of vessel. Okay. Parts. We got 97.6% uh, of our total value. And of course, <clears throat> crew, Milner, Kerman. And a boost to our reputation. Two contracts complete. Exploring Duna and uh, this exploring Duna. Anyway, I should just clear all these up. Had a few of the part testing ones go awry. All right, so let's see what we've got. So for our aircraft experimentation, I want the, 
the nice little turbojets. So we've got that. Probably also want the wing connectors, though maybe let, let's prioritize science first. We really need the gravioli we haven't gotten, so we'll have to hold off on the wing connectors for now, even though those are essential parts, of course. So, yep, no luck there. But now, we do have enough science for these, so let's get that. Okay, the claw I'll hold off on. That is a special purpose thing. And yeah, let's see about aircraft. Let's see what we can do with the turbojets. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so here's what I've come up with for a possible vehicle to rescue Kerbals from orbit. And, you know, based on what parts we have, it's somewhat similar to designs I've made in the distant past. Uh, so I've uh, hopefully wisely dumped some oxidizer. I'm not carrying any of the tanks that only use, uh, only have uh, liquid fuel in them. I'm not using any of these. So, um... Yep, four of the turbojets, one LV uh, T45, and then some of the Rockamax 2477s for extra thrust. Um, like I said, uh, similar to something I did a long time ago, I've got the roundified monopropellant tanks here. And uh, I've got the fuel line, I don't know if this will even work properly, but I've got the fuel lines going back and forth because... Um, Eventually what's going to happen is these tanks are going to empty and uh, because of firing the main rocket. But then when we return back into the atmosphere, we want these jets to be able to run. So if these tanks are empty, then they'll say that they don't have any fuel. So we need the fuel lines running back as well. So it's sort of complicated. Hopefully that'll work out. Just in case it doesn't, I have uh, got a decoupler and uh, parachutes here. Uh, the front landing gear is on a decoupler. Uh, that's partly because uh, this little small hard point is a bit too small uh, for the profile that I want. I don't want the nose uh, pointing towards the ground, that's unsightly. But also because if we do need to escape and use the parachutes, then we can dump the landing gear as well. Uh, so, yep, all of that is good. I've got everything action grouped, as you can see. Uh, the rocket maxes are they're, they're sort of for more fine-tuned adjustments once we're in orbit also uh, they're very helpful for that sort of thing even though they're not efficient but we don't want to keep running the LV T45 all the time if we're just trying to boost towards a target and stuff like that so that's part of what they're for though we do have the RCS as well okay so uh, I think that's uh, all of the ideas and I can show you the center of mass and center of lift are like that. Uh, most of the fuel, as you can see, is right along the center of mass. So hopefully that won't change too much uh, as the flight uh, goes on. So, yep, we'll see about that. I need to uh, find a Kerbal to fly this crazy thing. Uh, let's not uh, carry any of the uh, people that we have here. Let's hire a few others. So, we need somebody very courageous. Uh, it seems like Cal Rod Kerman is the best bet. Uh, I, I can't resist uh, not getting Frobart Bar Kerman. Uh, any interest? Lem Kerman. That's interesting. I like that name. Uh, Guzfrey and Tom Doss. Both seem like good pilot material. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so uh, for this one, I actually want the, him in the Mark II cockpit, I think, because that's the one most directly attached to parachutes, safer that way. So for our test flight, we need uh, Mr. Courageous, Minimally Stupid, okay, Cal Rod. So he's in the Mark II cockpit. And let's try this out. Okay, so here we are with Cal Rod, uh, SAS on, throttle up. And we'll keep an eye on our materials. You'll note that uh, as far as intake uh, stuff is concerned, we've got those engine nacelles, we've got the ram air intakes, and we've also got a circle of radial air intakes here. So that's the situation there. Okay, here we go. Now this is a very heavy thing with very little 
by way of lift, as you can see. So I'm not expecting to rotate anything less than 100 meters per second. Here we go. Okay, rotating. Careful not to scrape the tail. Uh, we've got. I got it uh, just in time. Not, uh, of course, uh, the end of the runway has that lip where where uh, it could be very helpful. But uh, we were off the ground before the end of the runway. Just barely, though. Very heavy design. Cow rod is scared stiff. It's the view from cow rods. Oh, no wonder he's scared. Not even the slightest bit of instrumentation. Well, uh, yeah, I guess it's a good time to talk about point two five, huh? Uh, so I guess we'll be getting some serious uh, cockpit redesign in point two five, and uh, hopefully all our cockpits will have instrumentation in it now. Uh, that's that's one benefit of point two five. I'm not entirely rushed about upgrading to it. I I'm still sort of in uh, getting my feet wet in uh, point two four, as far as I'm concerned. And of course I have to wonder what to do about this series when point two five comes out. I'll, I don't know, I, I, but with all the changes with the administration stuff and all that, I don't even know it's, if it's possible to upgrade our saves. Uh, I didn't see anything about that on KSP TV this weekend so far. So maybe there's a possibility of upgrading saves, but I doubt it. And in any case, it's been my pattern to always uh, start a new version stock. So I, I think what I'm I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a way to sort of marathon the stock thing. So I'll just try and uh, record a whole bunch of it, like uh, one or two nights or something like that. Uh, see how fast I can go and then chop it up like that and then uh, and then I'll keep going on with this series in point two four I would think that uh, it's not really I mean obviously our thrust is not going to be a big limiting factor in this case neither should intake air be what really will be a limiting factor as we get into the higher altitudes is lift because I don't have too many air surfaces on this. And so what I would anticipate is we're going to probably have a loss of lift at some point. I don't know where though. At that point I'm gonna need to fire the rockets. Let me try and build up speed a bit. Just uh, carefully. I don't want to lose vertical velocity but I wanna try and give it a suggestion to pick it up a bit get more air moving across those airfoils to create lift of course that's all based on real aerodynamics and <laughs> I, I, I'm still not a hundred percent sure I understand KSP aerodynamics just yet okay Got to watch intake air now. Looking good. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh, loss of lift here. Uh, okay, looks good, looks good. I'm gonna say 0.24 for the limit for these engines on the intake air. Okay, I'm gonna light the rocket. Uh, I'm being very iffy here. Okay, I'm gonna shut off the jets now. Oh, what what's with the don't turn? Huh. 
wonder why we're sort of tilting in one direction at this point. Everything is down the center line. Ooh, this doesn't look like it's going well. Can we... Can we run the jets without flaming out? I don't know. Oh, this is very iffy. Come on. Okay, let me turn off the jets. They sound like they're gonna... Uh, wow, stability, iffy. Come on, pulling up hard here. Let's try and go straight up. Come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, let's let's reconsider this. <laughs> uh, hmm. How much can these jets get away with? Okay, good, good. This is a test flight, folks. It's amazing it's working out as well as it is, of course. Poor cow rod in there. Uh, we're not getting much lift out of the wings. I'm pulling up as much as possible. It's just not uh, angling up very well. And now we're going to be losing velocity as well. Let's try all engines. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Don't. No. Come on. I'm going to kill the Rockamaxes. Come on. Calrod is happy. I don't know what Calrod is happy about. I think I turned on the rockets a little bit too, er too early, actually. We could have probably gotten more out of the... But I don't know why we started tilting down at that point. That's annoying. Good thing we don't have deadly re-entry. That's the only reason I'm trying it like this. Otherwise, uh, I would definitely not be. And, of course, parachutes. Right, Calrod? Calrod's happy because he's got parachutes. I think what I need to do is just remember to pull up once I've uh, lit the rockets. I think we got to find out here where the where the intake airline is going to be. Okay, well, right around there. I heard it. Uh, let's get the Rockamax stuff up. Wow. For some reason there are serious control issues. Well, I mean, of course it's because... But uh, the reaction control systems in the pods should be pretty substantial, so I don't know. Okay. Okay, I think we're okay now. Relatively speaking, though. Now, how's my attempt to balance the fuel? Are we... No, we're drained from the jet tanks. So, my attempt to double... Double feed things is not good. Let me sh see uh, if that's true of all the tanks. Yeah, so that's balanced, if not uh, ideal. Okay. Okay, let's uh, shut it off here. 
Probably a dangerous idea to even try to make orbit, but what can I do? We'll use RCS to deorbit. We can dump about 160 units of oxidizer, looks like. So despite all the drama, let's see if we can get into orbit at least. Well, we'll call that close enough to orbit. Keep things a little bit safe. Nope. I don't think uh, KSP agrees with me, so it's not giving me particularly good camera. Let's see now. Let us say that I sort of go like, well, that might land too short. Not short, long. E. Well, we've got a lift, so I really need to take that into consideration. Let's see that. How much delta V does our RCS system have is what we're currently going to ask ourselves. And we've got to turn off that engine, gauge RCS, and use the throttle, I suppose. Does that work? Uh, apparently not. Okay. It's just using RCS to stabilize, and that's not what I wanted to do. Wow, not much delta V at all, actually. I would say not more than 40. And we probably need to use the rockets then. Let's just go for the most efficient option. Okay, we'll go with that. Probably that'll make us land short, won't it? I'll turn RCS off now. Because we're headed through the atmosphere all the way. Let's extend that just a little bit. Try that out for size. Okay. A little bit of angle up is okay, but I don't want to flip out or anything. We got enough electric charge to hold things steady, I hope. Now, let's say I turn off the rocket and withdraw down and engage. Oh, they do read a little bit of liquid fuel. Okay, so they can draw, f I guess they can draw from uh, the center tank, even though the external, I thought the tanks would all balance out, but I guess they don't, but they can still draw from the center tank. Fair enough. Uh, well, I hope that's the case. It read some liquid fuel there. Uh, not much liquid fuel though, only 56 units there. We shall see. Okay, this is getting a little bit much. I'm gonna get all my abort stuff into the same stage so I can panic appropriately. Oh, we have trouble maintaining attitude. I'm gonna engage the RCS to have it help out. I'll also demand less of, oh well, I don't know if I've got much attitude control at all. Let's see. 
Nope, not much. Wow. I'm letting go of the control stick, it does that. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to control this manually. It seems to want to 10 right for some reason. Not sure why. If I flatten out, it wants to go right. Like that. Just yawing right for no apparent reason. We're at a reasonable altitude to run the jets. Give us some kind of control over here. Definitely don't want to hit the mountains. Ninety four kilometers left. Well, that's to the launch pad, not the runway. Okay. Whoa, 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 no, 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 not that, that, not that, not that, nope, 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 don't do that. Uh-oh. Always over the mountains, I have this problem. Come on. Crud. Okay, uh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, fudge. Ah, uh, dang it. Come on. Uh, I don't think we've got enough fuel for this. Come on. Nope, nope. Okay, eject. Eject, cow rod, eject. Oh well. Well, I mean, it was a troublesome plane to begin with. Uh, we've got uh, got some hope, though. Yep, uh, I mean, we got into orbit. And just need to uh, tweak the aerodynamics, possibly the center of mass a little bit on return. Maybe move the monopropellant tanks forward might help. Don't know, they were pr pretty much empty at that point. So they do have an empty mass, so... <sighs> well, 
Well, I mean, uh, considering we had trouble on the way up as well, it wasn't too bad. Now let's hope that, uh, Kamara, uh, you're descending a little bit quickly, unfortunately. And on a slope. Let me try and recover you quickly before... Uh, okay, I guess I can't do that. Uh, oh, shoot, it's going faster. Uh, can we put... Oh, maybe that's a bad idea. Oh, sh aww. And it's following that capsule. No, I, I... Oh, we've still got cow rod. Okay, good. Uh, and surprisingly breaking... You no, know, oh boy. Come on, cow rod. You can do... Uh, if I can see the recover vessel thing, I'll do it. Ooh, brakes actually work on this sort of thing, huh? Okay. All right, narrowly safe cow rod at least. Uh, valiant, valiant cow rod who uh, who took a very untested plane up. Lots of problems with the plane, but uh, we've we've got hope. I think uh, we're headed in the right direction as far as that stuff is concerned. Well, I might come up with something completely different, honestly, but uh, we'll see. Uh, anyway, so this has been an adventurous episode. We got our our guy from Duna back and then we tried this little plane the X3 so thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave the comment uh, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time